It's been a while, a bit too long actually, it's been like a month since the last devlog, but I'm back with uh, another devlog, this one's going to be a little bit shorter. Over the past month or so I went through kind of a game dev slump, which is normal for this period of development. I actually might do a video on what I call the game dev slump at some point. This devlog series is part of the reason why I pushed through it. Anyways, let's get into things. So first off, I redid the tiles because I was noticing they didn't really fit the rest of the style. The rest of the style is a little bit less detailed, I would say. Uh, the stuff I replaced it with is a little bit blobbier, and especially with the rocks. And I definitely think those blobby rocks need to be fixed. I'll probably get back and fix those for the next devlog or something. But other than that, I think it looks much better. Anyways, code-wise, the first thing I did was set up item spawning. At the end of the last video, I mentioned that I was going to work on the main game mechanic next. And the main game mechanic is that you can pick up pretty much any item and you can throw it. The way you fight is by throwing items, whether it be seed, rocks, knives, or whatever. So I set up a system for spawning items, which I'll probably rework later because I've changed my idea of how I want things to work, so I'm not really going to get into that since it's probably not going to stay. But basically I can spawn items based on some information I put in through my level editor. I can just put in the name of the item, place at a certain location, and it'll spawn. The image system is also pretty simple. I've just got a folder with images for the different items. I also have an icon folder for the icons for the different items. And just from the item name, the game will know what to do with those. I still need to add a system where each item behaves differently in terms of like, say, the weight and how much it bounces. But I'll probably get into that maybe next devlog, maybe the devlog after. It's not super crucial, but I'll probably work at it on some point. Anyways, after I got the items working, I just set up their physics and let them drop in place. And I wanted a way to pick them up. And I, for some reason I felt the urge to have some fun with the visual effects here. My idea was that I'd have a line pop up that kind of pointed to the item while also being the lower part of a visual that the text is displayed over. And I wanted to pull this line up with a nice smooth kind of bouncy animation. Since the main game mechanic for this game is that you pick up items and you fight with them, and you're gonna be picking up items all over the place, I need to make sure that it's satisfying to pick up items. So, I wanna make the part where you see an item, like when you buy one, you're able to pick it up. I want the visuals to be nice and smooth, or engaging on some level. So the first thing that came to mind for just the general transition for displaying the lines was the way that some elements on my website actually bounce a little bit when I hover over them. It's a little bit hard to see here, but they do bounce. And I wanted to implement this type of thing in my game, so I went and checked what exactly I did here. And funny enough, I wrote in a cubic bezier curve using some of the tools that Firefox actually comes with for making these. So this got me started on the idea, and you can see here that based on the angle of these two points, you'll get a different curve, and depending on the curve, you get a different type of animation. So I wanted to learn how to make these Bezier curves, and in this case, it's a cubic Bezier curve. Cubic Bezier curves have four points. It's two points if you subtract the endpoints. Normal Bezier curves only have three points. So I did some Googling and found this random Desmos setup that had the formula in there, along with some stuff for messing around with it. So I just pulled the formula right out of there, stuck it into my code, and I set up this tool for rendering the Bezier curves and also rendering the animation associated with it. I can mess around with the two middle points and I can also generate the two middle parameters for the Bezier curve. So if you don't know, in Bezier curves, there, if you can assume for animation's sake, you can assume that the first point starts at 0, 0, and the second point ends at 1, 1. So really, if you're doing a 3-point Bezier curve, you only have 1 point, and if you're doing a 4-point Bezier curve, you only have 2 points. This is just the way I found it useful for animation, because you assume that the line itself, 
like the distance on the line is time and then you can take one of the axes and use it to represent the movement itself. But yeah, since that leaves you with two points, you can just make a function that generates the Bezier curve based on those two points, which is exactly what I did. Or actually in my case it's a class. And you're pretty much ready to go. So I hooked up my Bezier curve with some a line system I made where it can spawn in lines and configure it to draw with the timing of the Bezier curve. And because of the way the lines work, it can assume what it should do when you exceed the end. So I can add a bit of bounciness to it past what I specified as the points for the lines. Anyways, here's the final result for that. So I can walk by this wheat grain on the ground and you can see this bar pop up. I also hooked up the Bezier curve to the text that pops up so that it pops up similarly and looks really smooth. I ended up putting in like a total of three hours onto this system, but it's totally worth it. I, I'm probably gonna hook up a lot of things in this game to Bezier curves to make it look nice and smooth or whatever. After I set up the item indicators, I decided to set up the inventory itself so you could pick up some items. The inventory is just a dictionary, which is a key value set up. So the keys are the name of the item and the values are how many of that item you have. I also have a list for keeping track of the order of the items in your inventory. And I generally made an interface for that. So my whole inventory system's a class. The inventory itself is pretty simple. And then adding items to the inventory is just one function call. So I can make it so that if I walk up to an item, I can just press E and it calls that function sticks it in my inventory. So that's easy enough. Later I'm gonna add a animation for picking things up and for throwing things. Cause it looks a little bit snappy right now as if the game's not really responding to it. it doesn't quite look right. So after I had an inventory, the next objective was to make things throwable. This was easy enough since I already had items in the game that were represented by locations and velocities, I could just spawn the same items in and just adjust the velocity depending on where my mouse is pointing. So I can just take an inverse tangent using my mouse and the position of my player to calculate the angle that I should throw at and I can have a specified throwing velocity and then I can just do sine and cosine on the angle to get the velocities of the throw and I can just apply that to the item that I spawn in or a little bit below the player's head and there we go I've got an item I can throw. After that I needed to just add some bouncing since that wasn't already there. That was easy enough. I already have a system for detecting what direction the collisions were in so I just made it that so that if you collide on the right or left it just multiplies the horizontal velocity by negative 0.7. So the effect that has is inverting the velocity, which is a bounce, and then also reducing it a bit to 0.7 instead of one. So it softens the blow a bit. And then finally I added a special cursor for aiming, because I was tired of just looking at my mouse for aiming. I feel like games should have their own cursors, especially pixel art ones. Like the default Windows cursor or whatever operating system you're using doesn't fit in too well. I animated it too, which was a nice touch, I think. Anyways, that was pretty much it for this devlog. My main objective here was to just implement the main game mechanics. That wasn't too much work. Next up, I'll hopefully be working on the NPCs and more item variety. There's a bit of a meme in my Discord regarding a certain item that people want to be able to throw. You'll probably see that in the next devlog. So this is pretty much the end of the video now. If you're interested in seeing more up-to-date progress reports on what I'm working on, you can check out my Twitter. I post GIFs pretty regularly, and surprisingly, I, the GIFs that are in these videos are actually just a lot of the ones I post on Twitter, or in my Discord server, which is also uh, linked in the description, and you can see it on the screen. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.